Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We are excited to bring you guys round two, round two of pool play here at the Saints X Colleague Invitational, hosted here at the Saint at St. Clair College in the Nexus Arena. We got another exciting matchup after that thriller. If you missed it, St. Clair taking down the University of Akron early in pool play. So we're going to have another good matchup coming up right now. Right here to my right will be Davenport. This is a team that has found themselves ranked inside the top 30 in colleagues power rankings posted just a couple weeks ago. And well, it's a team it is a team that is looking for redemption from last year's land. They finished second place, fell just short of taking home the title here at the Rocket League Invitational. And of course, on the other side, you're going to have Durham. This is a team that has added two players and two very well-known players uh, within the scene and uh, in Zosian and Jordan. And these guys are looking to prove themselves. Durham has not had a lot of opportunities to showcase their team on the big stage. So... This could get really, really interesting, and we could be getting into a deep series as well. Well, that'll do it here from the stage. I'll throw it now to Sebdot and Tio. Thank you so much. And yes, it is Durham College versus Davenport University. Davenport coming off of a, from what I hear, a relatively close set against Northwood. Of course, the number one seed here. Durham, the fourth seed here, but I, in my opinion, think that they have the potential to be much higher than that. They have a win over Northwood in their previous history, and this is a tried and tested roster. Yeah, very, very strong roster. You said here for Durham, fourth seed, but definitely, definitely a strong team to look at, and this should be a pretty close matchup. As you said, it was a pretty close matchup that Northwood just had against Davenport so it sh maybe they're just playing on top of their A game today and maybe they can really bring the pain I mean listen land can bring a lot of things to teams and some of that can just be skill and consistency and doing that against you know a team like Northwood who have been able to showcase so much skill in almost every end of the pitch not just in Kalicha but in pro play speaks to a lot uh, of how Davenport are playing currently Durham on the other hand of course playing with Jordan Zosian Wildfire. Wildfire, a long-standing member within Collegiate Rocket League, part of Durham's first really strong roster back in the day. And Jordan, of course, the ex-pro, currently sub for TSM, but of course we know him from Torrent and Alpine and whatnot. He still honestly slaps. I was even talking to him like, dude, you could literally go pro at any time. And he, he's still so good. Uh, Zosian, of course, course the third and really just a, a more of a test for this new roster I think uh, to see where he is I think he, he fits firmly in the middle for Durham but I, I would definitely say Jordan is the standout performer here yeah without a doubt a very very strong roster and you know it should be a very exciting series you can see all players are on stage just getting ready for the game making sure they're staying locked in you know LAN is usually very different from just your regular uh online matches there's so much more that's involved in land you have to play in person you have to see the other team across right from you you have the crowd you have people watching so a lot more pressure and you know that's where you see the best players show out when the pressure's really on yes and of course because it is LAN, it sometimes means that things don't always go to plan <laughs> and with that of course we have tech issues uh you know just trying to fix some stuff i think there's just maybe some login uh stuff that's going on because of course it's rocket league uh so we're going to take a just very very quick short break we'll be right back in the meantime with davenport versus durham we're kicking things off so don't go anywhere yet it is a long day ahead of us with a lot of incredible matches so we'll be right back
and we are back and all tech issues are resolved huzzah and now we are ready to go into our second match of the day which will be davenport versus durham college the match is just about ready we are just about good to go we are very excited of course it is going to be our fourth seed versus our fifth seed in group a of the saints X colleague Rocket League Invitational. Yeah, it should be a good game. Could go all the way to five, five, five games. That would be obviously what you would you want to see if you are a Rocket League fan, which we are. It'll be very. It's gonna be very fun to watch. We have a bit of time before we get into the game. Let's take a prediction on this series. What, what do you have? I still take Durham because I don't like American teams. <laughs> I can't argue with that. Let's get, let's get the true. score. Let's it's get true. This, let's get uh, the I, I listen. I, even if Davenport are playing hot, I don't think that they're going to play as hot as they did in round one. Something about playing a team like Northwood just really you either rise up to the challenge or you completely deflate. And I don't think that a single performance against Northwood is good enough to determine where I think they're going to end up against Durham. Um, and that's why I think that Durham, they're just going to be consistent. They are well rested. They actually got to stay here in hotels in Windsor, Ontario, so that they could be nice, refreshed. They don't have to travel far except for wildfire who drove into Toronto with me. Uh, and, they're going to be good to go the moment that they, they get into the server. Um, Davenport, I don't think they're going to be as prepared against Durham, even if they are just coming off a series against Northwood. So I'm going to give it like 3-1. I mean, that's, that's a fair a fair scoreline. You broke it down well. I mean, it's a very, very fair scoreline. And as you said, consistency is completely key, especially at a land tournament where you're playing so many games in one day. If you can just, if you have a couple of hot games here and there, that's not really the way you want to play in a tournament that lasts all day. You need to keep the consistency and then just get better and better throughout the day. As you know, it's still the group stage. Games aren't as important here, but after these next few games, after we get into the playoffs, that's when we're really going to see things ramp up a notch. Yeah, again, with, with round robin, things can go really awry, mainly because you are playing every team, right? You are getting a group, of, you know, a sense of everyone in your group. And I will say that when it comes down to it, you know, I would still say group A is generally favored uh, while group b is strong we have akron and st Clair in that group gvsu i don't rate as highly in oakland are still trying to make room with that new roster uh group a on the other hand i think you know we look at northwood obviously we look at durham who has beaten northwood in the past who still has run-ins with opens and still is competitive i think that this is we are going to reset the server i believe this may be test lobby or we forgot to turn off bots so 4v4 bots everyone Four all four. right let's take a look oh we got foamer foamer's coming in hot oh okay all right i guess no no bots uh but we're just gonna reset the server that's fine um i think when it comes to group a like i can't see anyone in group a that isn't competitive to a point. Conestoga is the big question mark because they're unranked and we haven't seen as much from him. Um, but among the top three with Davenport, Northwood, and Durham, they can all do damage. Yeah, without a doubt, come playoff time. I mean, we're going to see complete fireworks. That's the beauty of a line. You just get the best of the best. You throw them all into the fire and you see what happens. And I just, I just couldn't be more excited to see what happens later on today. Yeah, and uh, when it comes to playoffs, I think seating will be really interesting. I want to know kind of where everyone ends up. Honestly, Sinclair beating Akron, it throws like a big wrench yeah. into how everything really goes just because of the fact that Akron was higher seated. They're, they're kind of generally planning the bracket where it's going to be end up Northwood versus Akron in that grand final. But now that Sinclair got the win, it's all on Akron to see if they're going to be able to ameliorate their performance, hopefully get another win against Oakland and GVSU. That way, if St. Clair end up dropping a game to either Oakland or GVSU, then they can get their first seed back. Then they can go for a tiebreaker against St. Clair or it will be reseeded. So I think with Akron, they're still looking to the grand final. They're still wanting to play again. I love how we're just assuming that Northwood's making the grand <laughs> final but i mean come on it's hard, um, not to. it's hard not to but so that's kind of where they're looking to end up is they want to be in that grand final at the end with northwood yeah without a doubt but as you said St. Clair getting the victory they can 
stay playing the the way they did, they can definitely get the first seed in this group and then go up against the four seed of Group A, which is definitely what you want to look forward to in a tournament. You want to place yourself as high as you can in that round robin to give yourself an early advantage in that playoff. Obviously, any team can upset any team, but we are getting underway in Game 1 between Durham College and Danforth University. Let's get it underway. Yes, the wait is over. We are finally underway. No bots this time as Durham will face off against Davenport. Two teams that really came from out of nowhere. Durham have a long history in CRL, but weren't able to compete as much with this roster. They had to take a break a couple times, were forced to compete in a lot of CCA Opens, but now with this roster, I think they are looking to be extremely competitive come the next season of CRL. Davenport, on the other hand, already coming out with a bang with some decent matches, but these passing plays from Wildfire, as well as Jordan, look to keep Durham pretty dangerous. That was a pretty nice attack, but not enough pace on the ball to do any real damage. So Davenport is going to find the defense. Let's see what bolt he can find on the attack here. Nice little 50 challenge there coming out from Durham. And Jordan's going to be able to clear that one away. No fireworks too early on. They're going to be on the attacker, but Bolti has a very easy save for himself. Going to get find the demo there onto Jordan. That's a bit of a dangerous attack now for Downforth, but Science is going to be there for the save. Section going to look for a pass to a teammate here in the middle. Bolti's flying through the air there. Ball's a bit of a dangerous spot, but Wildfire is going to be there for the clearance of Durham to start the counter attack. That's a bad 50 though midfield Jordan's gonna have to cut it off and he does before it gets too too dangerous and threatening Jordan able to get the boost steal oh good bump on Bolty though exiled trying to cut off wildfire oh, able to put it on just barely saved on the post Jordan keep it in the midfield as the demo will respawn 319 Jordan delaying over to wildfire not able to get the sauce on it so the save will come through for Davenport they survive another second against Northwood, uh, oh, Northwood <laughs> Durham here. Sorry, Freudian slip. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. It's gonna be a long day. Don't worry about it. As two minutes have gone by, no goals just yet, but Durham definitely playing with a bit more aggression. But as I say that, Davenport have a dangerous opportunity that should have been a shot on target, but just not gonna find the touch. There's a the counter attack comes out from Durham. The pass is gonna wow. come out. What a save there. Jordan. There's a follow-up shot there, but just not enough pace on it. Exile's gonna find that a save as now Downport need to find some offense here. Durham really having all the aggression and they're looking like the more dominant here in the gate team here in this first game. That's the thing is that Durham, they've been able to have good shot selection, good shot placement. They just haven't had the sauce. They need to really get power behind it. And now we can see Davenport chasing the demo, Ooh. chasing the bomb, still dangerous for Durham. Jordan finally able to get the clear. We'll see what he can do solo. Gotta collect the boost, get the flip reset. Will be challenged immediately by Exile. And it's gonna be an attack coming up from Bolty now. He's gonna find the demo here. Exile's gonna look for a cross to the middle, but Wildfire's actually gonna pick that one up with the help of his teammates to find something, but won't be anything there. The attack still coming out from Durham as they're still keeping up this aggression. Jordan gonna go for that 50 as the shot is gonna come out, but the easy save comes out from Exiled. Three minutes by, neither team really finding an upper edge here. Yeah, I mean, Durham has been poking and prodding, waiting for their chances. This one might be one for Davenport if they can get the down pass, but no. It'll be knocked up straight to the ceiling. Exiled looking to challenge, not gonna be able to get much. Wildfire, no boost. In fact, a lot of Durham College is just left empty. Jordan have to reach for this one. A clear all the way across will finally leave Durham with some room to breathe and maybe even an opportunity. The side shot just doesn't find its angle. It's gonna be another attack coming up from Downport. Nice little flip reset from Exiled, but won't be able to find the goals. The save is coming out there and it's Wildfire. Durham going back. There's a dangerous opportunity from Wildfire. It's still a dangerous opportunity, but this ball's just not in the perfect spot for a follow-up shot. Let's see if the pass comes out from Wildfire. No, it's gonna be Downport able to clear it out with a minute left. Neither team able to get that very first elusive first goal, but Bolt's gonna find a demo there. And now the counter attack comes out from Exiled, gonna take it around wow. the defender. Beautiful solo goal there from Exiled as Downport take a 1-0 lead. Yeah, this is just an unfortunate challenge from Zosion. He was expecting at least the flick to go a bit earlier, but Exiled, patient in his offensive play, leads Davenport to a 1-0 lead. So now Durham, we're gonna have to turn on the Jets here. Last minute, and oh, that no! is unfortunate. Wildfire shaking it off, but that might be a win for Davenport. 
That's a bad mistake to make, but you can see uh, maybe that's just the pressure getting to the players. But it's only the first game you can't get too upset about. You have to have a short memory wildfire. Everyone makes mistakes, but it's a 2 0 lead for Davenport now as they look to take a lead in this series. Durham, it's going to be hard for them to find two goals in these 40 seconds, considering they couldn't find one for the other four minutes of the game. As Davenport really been playing well defensively here. Nice. Another pretty Standard save, but beautiful follow-up from Wildfire, making up for his mistake, gives Durham a breathing chance in this game. I mean, I still give this to Zosia on here. That shot was so well-timed and well-placed that it forced the defender to give just a bad attempt at a clear. Instantly rebounded Durham College. 30 seconds to make this work. If they get a decent kickoff, or at least a decent clear, to take the possession all the way across. Wildfire looking for a bump to make this happen. Jordan. Gonna make it even closer, oh, Jordan! Going to put one on, but it will be saved. Beautiful save there coming out from Downforth, and with 15 seconds left, you must, must think that's all there is to it. But Jordan gonna find another shot on target. Beautiful save again from Section, as these crucial saves come out from Davenport. Three seconds and counting. Next time this ball touches oh, down, no, that will be the, the game. Double commit. The double commit comes out, and there's a bit of miscommunication there. Leads to game one going over to Davenport. Yeah, and you could tell Durham was cooking. They had an idea in place, but the double commit just killed it all in its track. So Davenport coming out early with this one with a good game win. Honestly, even though a lot of it was kind of based off Wildfire's unfortunate <laughs> whiff, which I don't think he cares about, but Durham have the capability to get back into it, no problem. And I think they will. They might do so as we are underway in game two, getting into this one quickly. It's gonna be down fourth. Better kick off there, but as I say that Back. right away, goal comes out for Durham College off the bat. Jordan gonna find the assist. He's OC on there, and they take a very early 1 0 lead. Yeah, off the kickoff, too, off the rip. Zosian just in there already. Puts Durham to work. He's like, nah, we're gonna shake that one off. We're gonna make it work. Davin, who? <laughs> I mean, it's a great start for Durham. They couldn't ask for anything better. We're kind of struggling on the offense last game. Having this 1-0 lead will definitely put them in the driver's seat. Now down fourth, have to answer. But oh, it looks like finish. Durham, oh my goodness, beautiful fake there coming out as Jordan finds the finish. And you can see Durham are really turning it up a notch. Yeah, even the communication as well. You can tell they're locking in Wildfire. And getting the bump as well on the defender just in case the transition there's so many pieces of that play that requires it to work and durham college they're making it work it's gonna be the attack coming in from down fourth a dangerous opportunity there but bolt is gonna find the demo on to wildfire section gonna go for the attack and Davenport really gonna have to turn it up to bring this game back durham Firing on all cylinders very, very early on. Let's see what Exile can do on the attack. You're going to look for a pass to a teammate, but good defense from Durham coming out. Now they're going to look to start an attack of their own. Volti, though, will find it pretty easy. If it's a great 50, though, from Jordan. Gets a lot of pressure. Misses Baking. the follow-up. Wildfire is there for the shot. Great save coming in from section. The follow-up won't be there as it's still a 2-0 lead. But Durham definitely had a dangerous opportunity yeah, there. These fakes coming through, the fake aerials for Durham College. Even though Wildfire wasn't able to put it oh, on, no. it was still great. And that one, though, will be going for Davenport, going in high and punishing the whiff. That was a great move from Exile, taking it over Jordan. And Wildfire just couldn't get there in time. Beautiful play from Davenport as they're able to get a goal back themselves. And it's looking like a very high scoring game so far. So definitely room for comeback here for Davenport, but Durham still gonna keep up the aggression. Oh. Looking for an instant <laughs> goal off the kickoff again. Wildfire, beautiful moves there as he takes it around all three defenders. Roll back the years for Wildfire. 2017, 2018. This man willing to put Durham College in his back pocket and bring him over the finish line as Durham College, 3-1 lead, still 340 left. Zosian looks to put one on. Jordan looks to keep it dangerous, but will get challenged. Oh, geez. Crucial touch there from Wildfire. That could have been a dangerous opportunity. Still a dangerous opportunity. Mm. Section going to find that shot on target there and going to make it a 3-2 game. We're just having a complete shootout in this game as the shot comes out from Section. Maybe a bit of a whiff there from Zosian, but 
a great shot nonetheless as it's five goals in the minute 30 here. Yeah, even with that shot though, I'm still looking at the placement. This is a doink. That's going to be immediately converted on from Jordan to Zosia on the one-two punch. I mean, Durham have scored three goals instantly off kickoff, and that's the reason they're leading in this game. Beautiful team play there as they take a very important two-goal lead. Goals just seem to be coming out of nowhere in this game. As Let's see what this kickoff has to offer. Davenport are going to be able to hold on, not give up the goal instantly as they need to find a way to claw, claw their way back into this game yet again. Yeah, and you can tell even right now, Durham, they're looking to just punish bad challenges from Davenport more and more. Play immediately off it, though in turn, oh. Durham College haven't been that great in their own challenges. And I'm wondering at some point, they're just gonna try and play it a bit more passive. They're even playing passive right now, looking to play in transition. This one might even work as well. This actually needs to go all the way back just to try and get the save, a pinch off the ground. No one will be there to receive. Jordan looking to keep it in the orange half, and he does. Zosian, pass, high, leaves it for exiled. Durham will have to reset. Yeah, Davenport now gonna look to start their own offense here, but Jordan, nice pass to Zosian. Volti gonna miss it now and in the air, but Exiled will be there for the cleanup. Jordan gonna go for that 50, but miss it completely. It's a dangerous opportunity for Davenport, but he won't be able to find anything on the follow-up. Nice bump there from Exiled, but Volti will fly in. Look, maybe look for a pass oh, to himself. Bolte. Beautiful pass. The oh, demo, demo comes through, but there's nobody there for the shot. Does Durham are able to withstand Davenport University's uh, aggression? Yeah, Davenport really let off the gas, though. I think they, they had such a good play in mind. Everything was falling into place. All the pieces were collected. But the moment when it came to execution, it just fell apart. So with that, possession goes back. But now 2v1. It's actually going to play it high. Reads the waterfall. Bolty looking for the second touch. Third touch, potentially. But no, Davenport will look to just keep it going in the offense again. Not many possessions left. However, Durham College playing this defense smart. Yeah, Durham, no, they just need to hold on here. Just making sure they don't make any mistakes, don't double or triple commit to certain plays when they don't need to. And with a minute 30 and ticking, Davenport really need to pull something out of the mud here to tie this one up or like even take the lead. That's a dangerous little ball, but Jordan will be there for the defense. Going to clear that one out with relative ease. and. It's just buying so much time for Durham here. So Sian gonna go for an attack of his own. Nice little pass there, but the save is there from Bolti. Uh, section now gonna look to pass that one back to Bolti. Nice little team play here from Davenport as they get the attack started. They're very dangerous position now for the side of Davenport, but nobody is there for the finish yet again. And it feels like Davenport are just kind of missing that last final stride. They get to these good positions, but speaking of good positions, Jordan will be in the perfect position to find yet another goal for Durham College as they take a 5-2 lead in the second game. Durham College relying on Jordan again. And even this, if this one didn't have the most sauce on it with 99 KPH, actually it was still pretty quick. It was perfectly placed. It baited out all three defenders. None of them were able to make contact. And this one essentially be wraps unless Davenport are able to score within the next 10 seconds because Durham College's defense has been efficient and effective. Yeah, Durham has been good on defense, other than maybe a couple just mistakes, honestly. They've been really, really solid. And you can see Downport went for the triple commit there. They knew the only way of getting back in this game was to go all out, and it just didn't work out. Nobody's back on the defense, so Sion's gonna find another goal for himself. Third of the game, I believe, there, as Durham take a 6-2 lead and will more than certainly be tying the series up. I mean, at this point, you wouldn't even believe that Durham College actually lost game one, considering this performance. If anything, it shows a good indication. It was a wake-up call, okay? It was a good wake-up call for Durham College to finally take this series seriously. And now that they are, and I'm scared to see what they're gonna bring. Without doubt, and with 15 seconds left, it's just gonna be wrapping up here. Both teams know the eventual outcome coming out here, but as you said, Durham definitely turned it up a notch and I think one thing for Davenport though they have to be careful around those kickoff goals yeah can't really be allowing more than one of those a game but three off, off and a couple of goals you just scored like those are such momentum uh, swings they just crush your soul you get yourself back into the game gets a very very good team and then instantly it like, becomes a two goal deficit again so that was a that was a good game from both teams but some some good kickoffs for Durham 
Yeah, I think even though I wouldn't say that Durham won these games off of kickoffs, yeah, yeah. I think they were a pivotal factor, and I think it really got them into playing more coordinated, trying to cut off any uh, cuts in the midfield that Davenport might be trying to attempt because they're really like trying to re-aggress in those transitions like really hard, trying to just challenge everything as much as possible to go for these long clears and eventually score. And I think Durham is doing a good job of just playing aggressive, cutting in rotation when they need to and almost continuing here off the corner and again you mentioned the kickoffs <laughs> they continue to be a factor here yeah i mean davenport just don't seem to have an answer for it luckily for them down went right off the corner off the crossbars save are gonna come out wildfire gonna go for an attack there it's a dangerous position and jordan off the bat off the assist of wildfire will fly in in the perfect position and will find a very very good goal for himself as durham yet again take an early goal yeah, advantage I, i'm wondering how much of it would have been effective if, if uh, section just played a bit more patient rolled up the back wall and potentially just tried to dive in for the save at that point it would have been better than just you know whiffing in the aerial which again you could just not whiff in the aerial but there's only so much you can do for that so now durham college firmly in the lead again we're look for an insurance goal that defensive play was a little scary as davenport will look to regress and try and play around this defensive rotation that just continues to be a nuisance for davenport yeah the downforth really going to turn it up in all here durham have turned it up a notch now. They, they're finding these dangerous attacks and Jordan's gonna be able to put it into the corner. Let's see if there's any follow-up. Wildfire gonna miss the down one, but the pass will come through. Jordan gonna stop the attack of Davenport with relative ease. And so see, I'm gonna look for a pass towards the middle as Wildfire's gonna be there for the touch. But this should, the clear should be able to come out. Wildfire though, gonna get over one defender. Doesn't find the little bump there onto Bolti as Bolti takes around a couple defenders. This could be a chance for Davenport, but they don't really have too much boost to follow up on this one. I'm wondering if Durham College is potentially outpacing their passes right now. They're trying to go for these midfield passes, but they're just a little too late to the punch. Their burst is doing great. They're getting these possessions. They're getting the touches that they oh. want. But even here, you can see Wildfire a little too late to the punch, and it's starting to cost them these chances and give openings to Davenport. Without a doubt, I completely agree. Just a tiny bit too late, but they are still up 1-0. They are still playing very, very well. Oh, Jordan, Jordan oh, there's Jordan. a dangerous opportunity here. Nice pass Ooh. over to Zosian as they take a 2-0 lead with that beautiful teamwork there. Easy catch from Jordan. And the moment that the ball is in his hands, he knows where he's putting it. Straight to Zosian. Easy one, two. Durham College continue their streak. 2-0 against Davenport here. Yeah, I mean, a very, very strong showing now, but Section definitely should have got that one on target, maybe wide open goal from Durham, a bit of a slip up there, but back on the attack, they go and look for yet another goal to really seal this one up. But we see Davenport, they can get a couple goals back, so this lead is still not very, very safe. A lot of time left in this Rocket League match. Oh, no There's gonna way. be a full court wow. shot, and right as I said it, the lead is cut in half. Volti capitalizing off a pretty big mistake there from Durham and the full court shot just goes in the net. I mean, it's just a simple case of Jordan was trying to click boost in the midfield. Bad timing, really. Was able to get the clear and it just resulted in an easy goal for Davenport. So they're they're given one. They're given one and oh, it's almost immediately almost taken away back. as Durham College looked to regress in that offense. Yeah, off the kickoffs, I mean, Durham have really been scary, but in the neutral game, it's been relatively early. That's a dangerous mistake there from Jordan. Almost a nice goal again from down fourth. Nice little shot there from Bolti, and in the snap of your fingers, Downport University bring themselves back in the series and make it a 2-2 game. Yeah, Zosian goes back post, but a lot of that comes off the defensive touch. Even Jordan trying to get the touch off the wall. At that point, I don't even think Bolti had really that much of a power shot, but yeah. the moment that Jordan was able to touch it, it became so much stronger. Without a doubt, as... Two minutes left, it's a complete, the game has completely flipped on its head. Durham went from very, very dominant to now kind of holding on as Downport really have the momentum here. Wildfire and Jordan double committing for that aerial attack as now 
Downport are going to be able to regroup here and go for an attack of their own. Zosian is going to find a crucial touch there to stop the attack instantly. 50 here from Wildfire, beautifully played as the attack continues from Durham. Zosian going to find a bombs. crucial bump there, and he just sneaks it in behind them as they take a 3-2 lead. Even with how telegraphed this was for Durham College, it was so important that they were able to handle this. Not only is it a goal for them, but it also keeps their team play in check. It keeps them coordinated. It gets rid of these double commits, keeps the communication on hand. And off kickoff again, Durham gonna look to get off to a hot start. It's in a dangerous position here. Wildfire on their lonesomes won't be able to do too much. Section takes around two defenders as Ocean is there for the clear. He's gonna look for an attack of his own. Is there anyone on the follow? Wildfire is here, but just a tiny bit too late. Volte gonna be able to clear that one up. A minute 30 left. It's going to take a lot from Downport to come back into this one, but they found a couple goals already. I don't think Durham are feeling too, too comfortable just yet. A section finds that 50, but the defense will be pretty good from Durham. Oh, Bolte. Oh, getting second touch. That's great pass if they're able to capitalize. Zosian and Jordan oh, no. both fumbling over it, trying to get the defensive play for a good clear. Good 50. It's going to be sent straight up for Davenport. Pass, potentially wildfire. Not the best touch but he's gonna be able to control it. Get even a better 54, Durham. Bolte, sending it across. Zosion, fight for the midfield right now. As Davenport double commits and it could be dangerous in transition, but that is an even better challenge. As Durham College collect boost to try and get the clear, and they do. That's a huge clear. A lot of aggression there from Downport. Had some dangerous opportunities, but just could not find the finish. And with 30 seconds left, they're going to have to go all out here. Nice little attack coming up for them, but perfect defense from Durham. They find the clearances. Whoa. Section does find a crucial touch, though, to get the ball into the half of Davenport. As the 50 comes out from Bolte, he's able to win that one and see if he can find the pass over to his teammate. But Exile just not able to find the finish. There was a crucial opportunity from Davenport that they're going to want back. And with 10 oh, seconds no. left, it's going to be needing perfect play from Davenport to get a goal here and send it to overtime. Durham looking to hold on three seconds and taking as soon as the ball touches down. That will be the game and the spike does come through. Durham College win the game 3-2 and take a 2-1 series in the lead. There's a lot of close calls in those final minutes for Durham. One, obviously Jordan getting the whiff, but also the demo that came through in transition. Wildfire being put in a 1v2 situation. Not sure what to do it. And honestly, with how he cut, it was so perfect. Wildfire cut, even though he was last man, not advised by the way, <laughs> but able to do it so he was able to negate the 2v1 into a 1v1, immediately neutralizing the pressure. Yeah, beautiful play there as they take a 2-1 lead, but this series is getting very, very close. Both teams showing why they are as seated as good as they are. It's a very, very close matchup. And, you know, your prediction looks pretty good right now. 2-1 for Durham. Yeah, yeah, so looking, looking pretty good, you know. And we'll see. We're getting started in game three. Let's see if Durham can get off to the hot start yet again. Looking for that kickoff goal. But finally, Davenport are going to be able to calm down, relax, and defend their goal for the first few seconds. So, Durham. To come out early. Almost does so. Section weighs it very patiently. Jordan whiffs this one and leaves the 2v2 right now. Wildfire whiffs, but at the moment, Davenport just not pushing the advantage too hard. Just waiting for defenders to come, waiting for their attempts. Zosian going to get the clear. We'll be able to put it on. So, Durham College looking dangerous still. Yeah, Durham always looking dangerous on that offense. When it's a 0-0 game, they really turn the pressure up a notch because they want to get out to that early lead. But Davenport looking to get out to that early lead. A save needed from Wildfire there. Bolte going to look for Whoa, a pass there. Save. Beautiful save from Zosian. It's still the aggression coming out from Davenport, though. Can they find one more shot on target here? Section going to look for it. Won't be able to find it. But a beautiful demo comes out from him. Let's see if any follow-up is there. It looks like Downport were able to weather the storm and gonna look for an attack of their own. Wildfire gonna look for a shot, but Section is there for the save. Downport really starting this fourth game with a lot of aggression. Yeah, you can already see. Oh, okay, this one might be bad as well. Okay, Zosian's gonna put that one on. Wildfire rotating just to be able uh -oh. to keep that in the half. No, it still might not be in. Bolty's gonna put it on. Just kidding. Davenport early lead here for game one. It seems like Davenport find a lot of opportunities when they are on the defensive end and they, they just counter on the counter attack. They just get a wide open goal, maybe a bit of a miscue there from Durham. And 
they're going to need to bring themselves back into this game to close out the series. So Socian, good pinch, great pinch actually. Jordan might be able to get up high enough for it, and he will. It's going to go off the backboard. Wildfire just want to re-aggress too hard. Potentially leave themselves open to a counterattack transition. Socian, Durham just looking for their opening, poking and prodding. Pass off the backboard will be covered by Bolte. And Davenport, despite all of their attempts, able to keep the defense alive. Beautiful defensive play from Davenport so far, but you can see Durham really turning it up a notch on those demos. The wow. shot comes out nice. there from Zosion by beautiful save from Bolte. Keeps Davenport in the lead, and let's see if Durham can really put on the aggression here. Jordan going to look for an attack here. Going to look for a pass. pass towards the middle. Zosion is there, but a beautiful save from Section yet again as Downforth playing flawless defense here, not making any mistakes. They're going to look for a quick counterattack, but Durham this time are able to get back. So much of this is just based off reads as well, just being able to communicate exactly where they are and how they're taking their challenges at one time. Wildfire playing this so slow, playing this so slow as Durham College we're trying to get a little cheeky, slowing down the pace of the game, seeing what they can do if they're just relying on ball control. And a lot of demolitions coming out from D uh, Durham in this game, but it just hasn't led to too much. Downpour playing perfectly, but that's a dangerous opportunity from Jordan. Beautiful shot on target, save. but a great save from Bolt. He maintains the lead for Downport University, and now they're going to look to start the counterattack section. Won't be able to find too much. Seems like you Davenport are just defending this one O lead with their lives. Not looking to aggress too, too much. Just don't really want to make that crucial mistake that leads to a goal. It's going to be an attack coming out yet again from Durham. But it's going to be answered by Exile Drill. Jordan's going to be there for the save. And with a minute 30 left, Davenport looked like they're in a good spot to take this game. Yeah, but I think a lot of this is just based off just good hero plays from Bolte. I mean, the, the defense has been strong, but it, it hasn't just been because of rotations right now. And I think a lot of it will come down to how they play this next 90 seconds. Because Durham, they're going to be throwing everything they can. They're going to try and play sneaky. They're going to try and play aggressive, looking for these demos as soon as possible. Section will get cut off. And just as you see here, Durham cutting off cutting rotation, doing everything they can to get a touch on the ball. Yeah, I mean, they're trying, but Downport doing so well to match them. That's a dangerous opportunity, but XL Drill is going to be there for the save. And, and dangerous maybe attack from Downport. If they put on a second here, that could be the game. That was a very, very good chance for them, but going to want that one back. It's 40 seconds left. Downport now on the aggressive side. Have to be careful, though. They still have this one goal lead. Don't want to over-aggress. Ocean going to go for an attack. Wild XL. Back. Well, 50 50. And uh, a great clearance again from Downport. 30 seconds left. Durham really going to have to turn it up a notch here. Dangerous opportunity from Downport, actually. Oh. But the counter attack's coming out. That shot's going to hit off the post, and it's not going to go in. 20 seconds left. Another shot going to come out, but a beautiful save from Downport yet again as Bolte going to look for that crucial touch. Jo won't be able to find it. Jordan finds a section up in the air. Will find that touch, however, with 10 seconds left. Wildfire has the one on two here, but Exile Drill is going to find that clearance. Five seconds left. This ball touches down, and no goals are scored. It will be downport taking this one and they're gonna have to get almost get a second goal there to end that game off but it wouldn't matter in the end as we're going to distance here going to all five games as downport takes game four yeah i guess so much for my prediction anyway going to game five davenport complete change of place so much in just reading the offensive rotation of durham making the goal line saves that they need to bolty an absolute hero yep. for davenport here when I look at Durham College, I mean, like, again, they, they have the pieces, they know what they need to do, and they're executing at least the initial parts of what they need to do. But now they need to put it to action. Game five between Durham College and Davenport University in round robin. Yeah, it's been a banger so far. Let's see who can come out on top here. <laughs> Excel, gonna look for a little bump in the net here onto Jordan. Bolt going to find a touch there, pass it down to Section, gets it around his defender. A lot of space to work here for Downport. Section takes over another one, but Wildfire will be there for the save. It seems like Downport get a lot of their offensive opportunities based off their defense, kind of based off Durham's maybe overcommitments, but they're looking to start off hot here in game of five. Downport going to have the defensive lockdown as said before. And this is just really how the way they've been playing the counterattacks has been the way they've found a lot of their goals. Yeah, I think so much of these challenges, though, are just going Davenport's way. Their challenge game has been pretty incredible at the moment. Jordan, not the best touch. 
Section, good challenge as well. Again, oh no, the whisk coming through. Wildfire needing to make that one work. And even with it, Bolty. Section, while uh, Jordan playing from the ceiling. This is where I want to see some of that midfield control. Collect that boost, make sure Davenport don't have a chance to even move on the pitch. Yeah, and that's going to be an opportunity for Durham here. So Sion going to take it into all three defenders, but Exile will be there for the clearance. Wildfire is going to get a big touch there. But Bolti should be able to control this one. A wildfire gonna get another touch, a very easy save though from Section, but a follow-up shot off the crossbar. Section gonna find the save again, and now there's no defenders back for the side of Durham as Davenport, yet again, on the counter-attack, are able to catch them out, and Bolti this time will get the full court goal and give Davenport a 1-0 lead. And a perfect example of how a double can make him completely ruin your momentum in the offense and lead to a counter-attack that gives your opponent the lead as it did here. So Davenport will take the early lead once again now we'll see how long they can hold it for Durham College already looking for the run back but they look a little bit deflated they're not sure yeah. what to do against this Davenport team I was just about to say the exact same thing they kind of look like they're falling apart just because these goals are so devastating it's not like Davenport are just making up crazy attacks it's just a counter attack with a couple touches that leads to these goals and that definitely deflates the mental a little bit and the fact that Davenport haven't allowed any kickoff goals in these last two games has been crucial to their success. They've been playing perfect defense for these past few games, and as you said, those hero plays have been very, very important as Davenport finally going to show some aggression, but I think they're going to go back to that defensive style that they played in last game. Yes, it requires a lot of uh, hero plays, as you said, but when you're playing against a team like Durham, you need hero plays in order to win. Davenport, halfway through this game, have a 1-0 lead. All right, section. Oh, even still getting that 50, man. They're just making Durham their food. They're so quick to the ball. And even now, with Durham getting these strong clears, they're not able to get any second touches. They're just getting these first touches. Okay, Jordan. Zosian, Jordan. Oh, what a Immediately, save. how bolty! What are you doing in that? That's so good! That was an insane save from Bolty, and it leads to a dangerous chance from Exile Drill. Jordan's going to be on the line, though, to save that one. Downport yet again pulling out the hero plays, and that's exactly what they need to take this series home. Wildfire's going to find that pass over to Jordan. Durham still have a lot of time to work with. Just need to not panic, but with Davenport defense being so, so solid, no. definitely some stress. That's a dangerous clearance again. If that one was on target, it would have been another goal for Davenport. Durham just kind of overcommitting at some place is here as Davenport a minute 30 away from taking this one. Durham definitely starting to stress now, starting to make some dangerous plays, but that's exactly what they need to do if they want to get themselves back in this game. Yeah, and with little boost to speak of, a pass over to Zosion. Oh. Is that one going to be in? No, but it's still dangerous. Oh. Jordan gets the floater. Bolty again is in net, and another shot will go through. Section able to get this one. I mean, Davenport is playing picture perfect defense. Ocean going to go for that challenge, but huge demo from section on to Jordan. The follow up will be stopped, and that should be an easy clearance now coming out from Davenport. A minute left as Durham are going to put on all the pressure in this last 30, 60 seconds. All they can do is Ocean tries to sneak this one through, exiled. Easy save. Bolty wastes time. Good 50 from Wildfire. Exiled has to die for it. Jordan also looking to dive. Ocean. Able to get a good 50. Wildfire gonna put this one just wide. Jordan still. Uh, oh, wait, what? Hello, Zosian. Okay, able to tie this up at 37. Uh, let's see how this even happened. Kind of a miss having to come out here. And a beautiful, though, shot from Zosian. So much pace on it. And Bolti wasn't in the net this one time. Wasn't able to find the save as Durham crucially tapped this game. 37 seconds left to see how kickoff goes. It's been Durham dominant with the kickoffs. But it looks like Davenport will be able to get the first control. And with 30 seconds left, we might be heading to our very first overtime. Our first and last overtime of this series section, trying to play the 50 well, and he does, but looks like Exiled will be able to take the possession over oh. for him. Section, Exiled, back to Bolty. Bolty, can you be the hero here? Doesn't get the good touch. So Jordan will carry it slowly across. We can see Zosian. Zosian looking for the oh! demo. Wow, Jordan! Wow. This man is a pro for a reason. Look at this touch he takes around section. Here's Ocean. I'm not sure if he found the bump there, but 
It was a crucial play from Durham as with three seconds left in game five, they're able to find the clutch, being down one no all game. As soon as this ball touches, down that will be the series. Let's see if they can get the spike. Oh, Maybe Jordan, get want to third. go. Want to get one more, but a beautiful series, a beautiful five game series from both teams. Durham in the end, able to find the victory. Durham literally stole that one. Yeah. <laughs> literally just like went to Monopoly, stole everyone's money, and then just walked away with it. And that one resulted in the dub just barely. But shout-outs to Davenport, really putting in a good effort. Bolte put on, like, one of the most defensive performances <laughs> I've seen in collegiate. It was an amazing shot at the top teams here. And they are firmly in contention, I think. This is a team yeah. that could go far. Yeah, I mean, I think they had the perfect game plan against their opponents. They played the defensive game and just counter, counter, counter. They found those, uh, obviously, some mistakes from Durham to allow those full court goals and those one-on-one -on -one opportunities that just happened. But it, it's just, it was just great defense from Davenport, as you said, some hero plays from Bolte, especially on that goal line. Definitely a big reason to why they were even able to push that all the way to five games and you know they had the lead there with 37 seconds left though just kind of fell apart yeah and uh, so much of it just came down to durham kind of waking up and i think the moment that they let off the gas in terms of just challenges in the midfield is the moment that they gave durham just enough room to operate in and sure of course there is the x factor that you can't count on jordan or you can't rely on jordan being predictable he is a top level player for a reason reason but that doesn't mean that you can just step off the gas and expect them to make mistakes because Durham is not going to make mistakes and you can't rely on them to do so so Durham barely walking away with this one will go on to their next match of course they're going to be going up against Northwood so hey congratulations you got a good warm-up yeah uh, so nice have fun up. with your next match guys but uh, in the meantime I believe we do yeah. have some replays loaded up here and I think with Durham here I'm honestly looking at how they're going to improve because realistically they should have been able to handle this one in a bit of a better fashion I think we see that in game one and two but as soon as those kickoff goals didn't start coming through it just felt like the game plan was starting to fall apart we'd like these challenges were coming through from exiled and they were able to just get goals that I think they shouldn't just purely based off of taking advantage of Durham's mistakes yeah, I mean, Durham making a couple of mistakes that they definitely usually wouldn't make. And Danforth, with relative ease, was able to take that first game. But in the second game, Durham really turned it up a notch. I think they scored six this game. And look at that kickoff goal coming in from Sassion. Beautiful there. And going to find another goal just seconds later. We're able to take that 2-0 lead so, so early. That definitely brought Danforth down in the mental game. Yeah, and even though Jordan, yep, going to be able to get that one. And really, I, I honestly, so much of, I think, the shots that were... I, I want to give Zosian his flowers because he felt like he was a really good facilitator for a lot of the attempts that Durham was going for. He was more willing to play that first-man role, get some passes off, try and just get that cut in the midfield to open things up in the offensive half, uh, even despite it, you know, kind of being a risk at times and gave a lot of openings to Davenport when they needed to. That shot from Wildfire was still a throwback, still will say it to this day. But with Davenport, Ableton play it so close and playing such a good job towards matching it, uh, or excuse me, matching uh uh, uh, Durham's level. I, I really think like any few possessions could have gone the other way. This one in particular as well. Yeah, I mean, the second game was complete dominance from Durham, and we thought that they may be starting to run away with this series. 6 2 was obviously an like, insane scoreline for them, and you know, they get off to this hot start yet again in game three. I believe they get an early goal as Downforth. If there's one thing they can improve is those kickoff and early scrambles. They just need to figure out what to do against the teams who are going to take advantage of maybe their little weakness. So Davenport now have played close to two of the top teams that we have here, which I'm pretty confident they'll be able to handle the rest of their group. Uh, I'm looking at 
with how they performed against Northwood and then how they performed against Durham College, what they might do against some of the teams that we have in Group A. I mean, just imagine them against an Akron currently or St. Clair. Both of them relying heavy on just good defensive rotation to make their play work. And then hopefully, and then obviously when they are in motion, they're just cutting off your opponent, looking for holes, being able to poke holes in that rotation to just be able to cut and get anything they possibly can. But Davenport, they're playing good. They're playing good. I'm, I'm very impressed. I mean, I'm, I have to say I'm impressed too. Like, they, even though they scored a couple goals and maybe mistakes of Durham, still getting in those positions in the first place is what really matters. Sometimes mechanics can go left and right, but just being at the right place at the right time, that's what you really want at the end of the day. You're expecting the best players to be mechanically basically perfect, but everyone makes mistakes. We're all human at the end of the day. So it was great play from both teams, but the fact that Downport was able to take two and even have a lead there. Look, we just see the full court goal coming out from them here in this fourth game. That was the only goal of that game. And then in this fifth game, it was another long shot goal from Downport which gave them the lead for so, so long. A beautiful opportunity there, but Bolte just found the full full, full court shot, gave Davenport the lead, but in the end, Davenport, uh, Durham were able to close it out. You know, I, I think with a team like Davenport as well, it's so easy to get overwhelmed by the mechanics that might come through, especially when you have a player like Jordan on the opposing team. But I don't think they'd ever, re ever really let that get to them. I think, yeah. especially Bolte, like he was so quick on the pitch. He was able to get to every challenge that he wanted to. And it never really felt like Davenport were a step behind. It never felt like they were getting overwhelmed by the pace of the game. They were able to match Durham in terms of sheer pace and rotation speed and everything to do with it. And I'm very just impressed that with how easy they were able to adapt to a style from Northwoods, which is obviously RLCS caliber, to Durham, which is its own sort of level within collegiate, that they were able to make these adjustments very quickly and only took like a game or two. If it was a best of three, no, they lose. <laughs> but if it is a full best of five and you have time to work with to make those adaptations, I think Davenport did a really good job at that. I have to agree. It was a beautiful series coming up from both teams. Congratulations to Durham on taking a 3-2 lead. We have a quick interview coming up. Let's throw it over there and let's see what the players have to say. Guys, I don't know what's going on here. There's got to be something in this Windsor air this Sunday morning. Yet another banger of a series here at the Saints Colleague Invitational uh, hosted at St. Clair College. I am joined now by Zosian from the winning team of Durham College. Overtime thriller in game five, um, you, you guys were up, you guys were down. Uh, what were the comms like? How did you guys power through to ultimately get the win? Uh, we knew that most goals that we would give them would just be free goals and just throw away. So we knew just to uh, adjust um, our, our small mistakes. And uh, yeah, that's what we did. And we just kept going and we got the win. So you guys haven't had a lot of opportunities to um, kind of showcase yourselves as a team. Uh, what would a tournament win here mean to you guys? Uh, it would mean a lot, you know, um, especially with the amount of uh, expectations that we have, uh, having our only result beating uh, Northwood last summer. So, yeah, uh, carrying it on and uh, winning this tournament would mean a lot. So speaking of Northwood, that's your next opponent, and that'll be the opponent you'll have to take down in order to come out of the groups as the first seed. What, what are the expectations going into it? What do you guys need to do in order to pull off the win? Uh, definitely fix our small mistakes that we shouldn't be making in the first place. And, uh, yeah, just score goals and take our chances, and we'll take it. Well, thank you so much. Uh, GG's, and uh, good luck in the next one. And, well, you heard it here, too. It's going to be Durham College going up against Northwood. We will see who will come out as the number one seed there in Pool B. Find out in just a few minutes.